Hello and welcome to Creates Cards video tutorial today. Today I'm going to show you how to do a technique that I'm going to call sparkling stained glass. Here's a sample of it. I don't know if you can, if the camera will pick it up, but there's thousands of sparkles underneath from using dazzling diamonds. If you do this though, none of the glitter will come off in your hand because everything is done from the back of um, this piece of window, um, it's a window sheet that Stamping Up sells. So here's one sample. This, the back was done with a sponge, sponge dauber to create the, the look. Here's another sample. This one, to create the effect, I used the back of a pencil um, using the rubber tip and swirled the back. So anyway, um, exact same colors. Both of these use tempting turquoise, daffodil yellow, and pumpkin pie. The one we're using today, we're going to use garden green, more mustard, and Cajun Craze. You can use any color that you want. What we're going to use is a piece of window sheet. It's flexible. It's see-through. We do sell it through Stamping Up. We're going to use some white glue. It doesn't matter what brand you use as long as it will dry clear. That's really important. We're going to use Dazzling Diamonds Glitter, and I just realized I didn't turn the overhead fan off. So give me just a second, I'll be right back. Any time that you're working with embossing powder, glitter, make sure that the overhead fans are off. Otherwise, you'll have a major <laughs> mess of sparkle and embossing powder all over. Another thing we're going to work with is having a piece of just wax paper underneath. This is really important because we're going to be working with quite a bit of um, moisture and ink, and you don't want it to seep through to your countertop or your table. We're working with a piece of regular tissue paper like you would wrap presents with. And the tissue paper just needs to be larger than the piece of window pane you're using. Take the tissue paper and crumple. Crumple it really tight. Reopen. What you're looking for, or what the effect you want, is all this um, crinkling, or, you know, rump rumpling together. So we're going to do it again. Then we're going to open up. It's very important to use a piece that is larger than your window sheet because this becomes smaller as you, um, you know, rub it, you know, crinkle it together. Okay? We're going to set this piece aside. Wax paper down. Window paint is the next. Now we're going to take our glue and again, white glue, anything that will dry clear. We're going to work on our window pane, and we're just going to do, I just do little circular motions. You just want to make sure that you get really good coverage. Get your ink, uh, your glue, I'm sorry, your glue, all the way to the edges. And then you want to, you know, a good coverage. You don't want to skimp too much. This has just become one of my favorite techniques. I. I love the sparkle that it gives. The fact that once this is done, because all of this is done in the back side, you don't have to worry about the glitter coming off. You, I don't know if you've ever received a card in the mail that when you've opened it, you have glitter every place. Um, one of the disadvantages to glitter. Well, with this technique, the glitter is actually trapped in between the window sheet and your cardstock so you don't have that happen. I wouldn't use this technique though if you're doing cards for soldiers 
just in case any of the glitter would come off on their uniforms. It isn't worth taking the risk. But overall, this is pretty much a secured technique for using glitter. And there's not a right or wrong way to putting this. You just want really good coverage. It doesn't have to be super thick, but you don't want it so thin that um, you can see through this whole card, you know, this piece of window pane. Just want nice coverage. Okay. I think that looks pretty good. You want to make sure you got went to the edges. And, you know, if you miss some of your edges, it's not a real big deal because you can always trim this down after it dries. Remember to wipe off the tip of your glue so that that doesn't, you know, stick. Now we're going to take reinkers. You could use one color, you could use numerous colors. You can work all in one area. So, like, this will be green and this would be the more mustard and then this would be the Cajun or you can switch it out. You don't need a lot but we'll just put some colors here. It's really fun to see what happens as it starts to blend. Even if you use one color, the one color will um, change colors as you blend it because you're spreading it out. So some areas will have uh, you know, a greater intensity than others. And you can see this is already starting to spread. Okay. Different ways you can do it. You can use it with your finger and spread it. Uh, trust me, it will discolor your finger when you do it. You can use a sponge dauber. This thin is washable. This is sponge. So when you get done, wash it out with warm soap and water. Or you can use it with the pencil and go around and then just keep clear, you know, cleaning off the tip of the eraser. Okay, so I'm just going to make little circular motions and you want to um, get this, like I said, as much to the edge as you can. You will end up going off the um, window sheet, that's okay, because when we get done with this, we're going to move it. If you get too much goop here, just pat it off. You can also do it on a paper towel. Okay. Oh, look how the colors, see how it blended the green and the orange, to, the more, more mustard together. I just love this, how it, you can get all different effects. If you were going to stamp on the other side of this when it's dry, um, this color, which is the Cajun Craze, and this Garden Green, I may have it a little bit too thick. So you have to be careful that you don't pick really dark colors. If, if it's something that when you're going to stamp on the other side, you want to show through. I love this though. I mean, this could be an effect, just a background. Okay, so I'm going to pat that off. Again, this can be washed off with soap and water. Then I'm going to take my Dazzling Diamonds. I put mine in a lock and lock container, but you can do it however you want. And then these are little um, snow cone spoons that I happen to have. You're going to take the Dazzling Diamonds and you're just going to sprinkle across. And you want really nice coverage. It doesn't have to be totally covered, but depending on how much sparkle and shine you want to come through. So I do pretty good coverage. And if you get too much in one area, just you know take your finger or um, your dauber or that and just spread it a little you know smoother. Oh, this looks good. Okay. Now, this, normally when we're doing glitter and we've got excess, we would sprinkle it, uh, take the excess on the, on the piece of paper, and then pour it back into here. Because we have glue and because we have 
three inkers, so we have ink on it. Don't do that. Not a good idea because it will um, contaminate the glitter you already have in here. Okay. Now we're going to take our piece of tissue paper and we're going to put on. Now this is really wet, so what I recommend is taking some paper toweling and just start patting. You don't want to smooth it out. You just want to pat it so it will adhere to the window sheet and all the glue. The tissue paper, and I'm not sure if you can see, but the folds and the creases in the tissue paper is what helps give the effect in the background. So we have that, and as you can see it's pretty wet this way, and we're going to let it dry for a minute, and then what we would do is pick it up, show you the other side, see how, see how neat, what the effect, doesn't that look like underwater, I just, I just think it's beautiful, alright, and again this is extremely wet. What I'm going to do so that my glitter doesn't spread all over the place is I'm just going to fold this in half. I'm going to set it here and then we're going to let it just air dry. It will take at least I would say an hour to dry. You possibly could use a heat gun, but this is paper. You may you may scorch it. You could also cause a fire, so I'm not going to recommend that. Now here's a piece that's completely done. What I would do with this piece is I would take Stazon ink. Stazon's really important. Stazon comes in black. We do sell it with, from Stamping Up, and stamp an image that is more solid and when you stamp on it then it's going to look like stained glass coming through. My blog yesterday had a photo of one that I had done a turtle and the turtle had quite a bit of um, light coming through on the stamped image so it looked like it was stained glass behind his um, hard shell. Really really a neat effect. So anyway I'm calling this sparkling stained glass. You can do it in any color, you can do it in one color, you can do it in dozen colors if you want. Just be careful that you don't get too much ink. Allow this to air dry. When this is completely dried, then just take your scissors and from the front side cut off all this excess tissue paper. And then this is ready to go. And as you can see, this is the top, this is high gloss, this is the back, and none of the glitter is going to come off. And so a great way to have a sparkling effect without having glitter all over the place when someone opens the card. Um, if you have any questions, um, feel free to go to my blog and post them there, or you can post them here underneath the video on YouTube, and I will be happy to answer any questions. Thank you so much for watching my video today.